John Quab. <laughs> Damn. Claw John McClawerson. Shiny McClaw pants. Yeah. Claudette. Claudine. Harold and Claw. Harold. <laughs> Okay, what what are we doing? Hey, claw fighters! It's me, Scott! <laughs> and Eric! And we're here at Mattel, again inside the gallery, giving you guys exclusive sneak peeks at Battle Claw. We're co-creators of the game and the show, and we want to give you guys tips on how to use all of the claws that we designed for Battle Claw. This is The Claw 101. <laughs> the Claw. <laughs> The first claw that we're gonna talk about is the Thunder Battle Claw. This claw belongs to Tai Yi, the hero in the show Battle Claw. And as you know, this claw starts out as the great Earth Titan Pan Yao's Battle Claw many, many, many eons ago. Um, and of course, when we first meet Tai Yi, he has his sort of sword and stone moment where he pulls it from the rock and he realizes his destiny to actually wield the Thunder Battle Claw for himself. We knew this was gonna be a really popular one for the game especially, so we wanted to use this as kind of the benchmark for what all the other claws would be based off of in terms of their strengths and weaknesses. So Tai Yi's claw is not great at anything, but he is good at almost everything. So the next claw that we're going to talk about is the Tornado Battle Claw. Uh, this one belongs to Shan Shan. Yep. She's one of my favorite characters in the show. Really one of the great advantages is the hooks on the side. If you catch a Jinlin with that and pull it across, it still counts as a capture, even if it's not inside your claw. As long as it's not touching the, the gauntlet portion of the, the claw itself, um, anything touching the claw on its own is part of legal grab. So the next claw we're here to talk about Duppy's. Duppy's Claw. This is actually the White Frost Battle Claw of Duppy. Um, and again, we tried to design each one of these to sort of feel, like look and feel like each one of the characters. So this one's a little uh, wider, meatier well, in healthy. the middle. It's, it's, a healthy, it's a healthy battle claw. It's got a healthy battle claw. <laughs> just like Duppy, right? So this one actually has the widest stance of all the different battle claws out there. So it really can capture Jinlins, Jinlins! that are further apart and try and bring them in. In fact, in development for this, Dubby's Claw was the most powerful Absolutely. one all the way around. Like it was, it was 100%. basically killing all the other claws. And so we had to actually design a, one inherent flaw into it, which is this gap right in the middle. The claw was so good that we had to put something in there that would balance it out with the rest of the claws. So right now, there is a chance that the smaller Jinlins, Jinlins! will kind of trickle through this little gap right here. But because you're usually using this claw with the strategy to get lots of Jinlins and put them in, if you're doing a multi-grab, it's harder for them to kind of get out that little area. The Flaming Sun Battle Claw. This claw belongs to Hal Lan in the game. Uh, and in the show. And Howland's kind of a tricky character, right? Like, he quits the team, forcing Duppy to join the team. He joins the bad guys on Wolf Fast Team, Tai Yi's uncle. Oh man, that Howland. Howland's claw is the only one that has four prongs on it. Now, as you can see, it doesn't open up as wide as some of the others, but since it does have four prongs closing, when you do have that pinpoint accuracy to grab that one Jinlin that you absolutely need to get this round, it consistently grabs it and holds onto it really, really well for dragging across. And here we go. The last The one. big baddie. The bad boy. This is called the Dark Flame Battle Claw. This belongs to the Fire Titan Mo Yan. For the Dark Flame Battle Claw, we found that this type of top-down trapping method was really, really good for Jinlin pileups. One of the little known things that you can actually do in this game is that you can swap out claws at any time. I think when we were designing and developing this, we thought of the claws like golf clubs, sort of like using the right club for the right moment. You can actually swap out your claw as much as you want. All of these are combined with a feature that I'm not sure everyone picks up on, but it's kind of cool. In the closed position, you can basically take the cord of the battle claw and wrap it around, and there's a small yeah. clip on the bottom, which allows you to snap the ring into place for easy storage. There's been a couple other things that has been translated into the product and some of the user generated content that we've been seeing out there has started to pick up on this. You might notice that each of these battle claws has little tiny clips that you can go in and no one's really been able to understand 
what these are for yet. The nubbins. The little, nubbins, little, if little you will. nubbins of these. What um, are these nubbins for, Eric? So as you know, this property was designed for a China market. And so when it launched over in China, they actually came out with these shiny deluxe versions of the Battle Claws, which had shields that clipped into the top of them and allowed you to add weights to it and all these other great yeah, things. Cool. Now, we're not, those are not gonna be available worldwide. Yet. yet, maybe, maybe, maybe one day. I, I'm, I'm not going to say one way or the other, but I'm saying that if the, if you want to know what those little things are for, now the mystery is solved. So I think that wraps up uh, all of the information you could possibly want to know about the battle claws. Uh, so thank you for watching Claw Technique 101. 101.